Not that we church God wants you to be excited about what he wants to do in your life Amen. a lot of times we like hey preacher you need to get at it I mean there's a there's a world dying and going to hell you need to reach them but God looks at you and says no you need to go reach them because we are all ministers so I like talking about Jesus Christ because of what he's done for me but I like talking about Indonesia because of what God wants to do for Indonesians right. who are you excited about who are you excited about talking about? Are you excited about Jesus? Uh, are you thankful what God's done in your life? Amen. And if you are, who are you telling right. about it? Oh, Brother Josh, you need to go reach them Indonesians. Okay, I agree. That's where God has me. Where does God have you? Right. Now, listen, I know your pastor's heart, very willing to, to, to minister to your community, this church, but sometimes the preacher's not going to be there. The preacher can't get there. So you've got to be ready with your Bible to reach people, to share the Word of God, to love them, to answer their questions from the Word of God. So I brought with me tonight, you probably know where Indonesia's at, but I brought my Google map with me, my Google map. Y'all like it? The way this one zooms in, though, you've got to walk forward, okay? But aren't you glad that God loves the world? John 3.16 is still in the book. I'm glad he loves you guys. I really am, but I'm glad he loves me because I know me. I don't know you guys. Y'all look like really good people. Y'all might not even need to be saved. I did. I needed Jesus. But man, I, I'm reminded when I think about the world of, of my need when Jesus met me, but then it reminds me of where I was at, and then it reminds me that everybody around me is just like me without Christ. There's not these really bad people called Indonesians over here. Oh, and there's this group of them that are Muslim lost people. Yeah, you written this to a, a Muslim the same way you do to a lost Baptist. You give them the Word of God. You answer their questions from the Word of God. When they want to start talking about things way off in left field, you say, that's a great question. Let's get back to the Word of God. We'll come back to that. Just keep taking people back to Jesus. That's Amen. what we have to do. We have a work and we have to stay focused. The devil's going to get us sidetracked, get us discouraged, get us fighting amongst ourselves. And that's only what the devil wants. That's not what God wants. So you guys know where Indonesia is at? Are you looking at it right now? I'm going to zoom in the best I can. If you don't know where it's at, that's okay. Hopefully after tonight you'll be able to find it. So on the other side of the world, down under, there's Australia. So there's Australia, does it, you know, down under, and just above it is the country of Indonesia. You see all those islands? Now, put your phones down. I got a quick pop quiz for you. Does anybody want to know how many islands are in the country of Indonesia? You might know it. Shout it out if you know how many islands are in Indonesia. 7,000. 7, Who said 7,000? Really good, good guess. It's not spot on. But I've got a different number. You know, you, got, you always look for that number the teacher wants, right? Right here. 6,000. 6, We're going the wrong direction, but it's close. One more guess. Anybody want to guess? In the back? 18,000. 18, he just Googled it. <laughs> That's right. So there's a bunch of islands over in Indonesia. 6,000. He said 6,000. 6,000 islands have people living on them. What is just a lot of people need to hear about Jesus. But the fourth most populated country in the world. You have China, India, they're neck and neck for first and second place. United States is third place. Fourth is Indonesia. How many missionaries do you know going to Indonesia? We just, the whole world needs to hear about Jesus. Right. There's not a place that you're going to find that my God does not care about. Amen. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is our propitiation for our sins, but not for ours only, but sins of the whole world. We just got to go tell people about Jesus. Are you excited about serving God? Amen. Go with me to Genesis, please. Genesis 41. I remember the first time I went to Indonesia. How in the world did this Georgia boy end up in Indonesia? Well, my dad did something really dangerous. He went on a missions trip. Parents, what you do is affecting your children. What you don't do and what you do. I'm glad my dad went on a trip and ended up, he became a missionary. So I had hardly been out of the southeast of the United States, grew up on a dirt road, eating bull, peanuts, sweet tea, and watermelons, related to everybody around me. 
And then we moved to Indonesia. I thought we were going to the jungles. We landed in a city five times the size of Atlanta. A lot of people, a lot of people. But God's enough. And I remember the next morning, I heard the call to prayer. I was like, what is that sound I'm hearing? They, that's them praying. It's everywhere, five times a day, all over the country of Indonesia. Can you imagine witnessing to 100 people and 87 of them being Muslim? That's Indonesia. It's just everybody. They just need Jesus. They need people that will love them and just go tell them the story of Jesus. Who are you excited about telling about Jesus? Are we excited about serving the Lord? I hope we are. In the story of Joseph, here's a young man who got excited about what was going to go on in the future. I don't think he had all the details figured out. But I think Joseph was just like, let's go do something. God's going to do something. Hey, brothers. If we fast forward a little bit in his life, though, Genesis 41, Genesis 41 and verse 25. Genesis 41, verse 25, it says, And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord. This time is about you. It's not about me. Uh, It's about you. We want to lift up your word, and I pray that you would do that which only you can. Please encourage and challenge your people tonight. I pray that they would have a greater burden for Indonesia tonight. I pray that they would also have a greater burden for reaching their community. God, do that which only you can. We'll praise you for it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So here we have Joseph is talking to Pharaoh. Now, we know that Joseph can't just walk straight in to talk to Pharaoh, right? But somehow God had him at the right place at the right time, and he was able to talk to Pharaoh. Now, maybe you know this story. We're going to run back through it real quick. But I hope that you can see your God at work in Joseph's life is also the same God that wants to work in your life. Did you know the devil really wants to mess up your view of the Word of God? I mean, there's a lot of things he wants to mess up in your life. Pastor and I were talking before the service. You get in a fight with a lion... Do you walk away with a paper cut? Like, oh man, that was a bad line. I got in a fight with a line. See that paper cut? Ooh, it was a bad one. No. What happens when you fight with a line? He destroys you, right? What does the devil want to do to you? Your marriage, your family, your children, your testimony, your walk with the Lord. He wants to destroy you. And it starts with your relationship with the Word of God as you pull away from it or you get closer to it. And here we have to understand that the Word of God is at work in our hearts and lives. And we need to be excited about sharing the Word of God. So here this story is God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. God was showing Pharaoh something that was going on in the future. What was it? It was talking about the famine, right? Do you know death was coming? Do you guys see any death around us? Do you see any problems? Do you see any need? Without God, where are people going? They're going to hell. Forever separated from God. Now I remember when my father-in-law passed away. He was affected by Agent Orange. Ended up he had lung cancer and we were there when he passed, but he knew the Lord. But when we talk about his passing, we're talking about him being separated from his body. Right? That's death. But the true death is to be forever separated from God. Right? Well, here God loves these people and he was sending Joseph to do a work to rescue people, to help them. And if you know the story, Joseph, God uses him. He puts him in the right place and a lot of people are helped. But God is still at work today. And you and I, we can look at God's word and we can separate ourselves from the word of God. And we say, that's the God of the Bible. That's Joseph's God. But my God in 2021, he's a different God. I'm not sure if we have any investors here tonight. I was talking to the pastor about my previous work in the secular world. I was a stockbroker, a financial advisor, and I was supposed to help people retire and stay retired. Can I tell you something about God? He's not retired. Amen. He's not looking at retirement. He's not approaching it. See, we've got to be careful. Our mindset of God's Word affects the way we live this life. And we have to understand that God is trying to show this world His love. But He's also trying to show them that there is a judgment that's coming and that hell is real. And if someone does not have their sins taken away, they can't go to heaven. 
God is still holy in 2021. Amen. God still hates sin, even though he loves the sinner. Amen. And you and I have to be bold to be proclaimers of the word of God. And Joseph is doing that. But can we look back in Genesis 37? It starts with this story about Joseph and he's being obedient in the small things. And there is death coming. But right now, no one really knows about it. Do you guys see anybody around you that are... They're separated from God, but they're just living life like everything's going to be okay. Listen, come to Indonesia with me. I'll, I'll let you meet some Muslims that are just nice, sweet people. See, sometimes we, we, we look at people and, and we separate ourselves from the world so much that we could never even approach them with the gospel because we're so far from them. And we demonize them. But if you and I would remember, that's exactly where we were at before we met Jesus. I'm a preacher's kid. I grew up in church all of my life, but I needed the same blood of Jesus Amen. Christ that saves the worst Amen. murder in the world. Right. So what you and I have to do is we have to see the world, yes, but we have to know that there is hope for them. There is death, but they are comfortable where they're at because they don't know the truth. So you and I have to go and approach them. So here, this story of Joseph, he's just minding his own business, doing what his dad wants, but his brothers didn't like him. They were a bunch of troublemakers. But then it continues on in verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Verse 8 says, And his brethren said to him, Thou shalt, shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream. And does it get better for Joseph after this? No, it kind of goes downhill after that. So here's his story, church. If you could see this. See a young man excited about the future. Are you excited about your future in serving the Lord? See, sometimes as we get older, your pastor, I think he, if we could rewind it later. I think he called me young. I, I'll take that, you know. You know, I, I, I'll call him young if he calls me young, you know. Uh, teamwork there. But here's what happens. When someone is young and they're excited about serving God, you know what we do as older Christians? Oh, they'll get over it. They'll get over it. Why are we supposed to get over being excited about serving God? I grew up in the Southeast and I learned how to be polite. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. All that. But you know, in America now, it's impolite to talk about Jesus. I'm not really sure it was ever polite to talk about Jesus. So now we have a, that, that struggle. Are we going to keep that excitement about being a bold Christian? Or do we, we kind of, well, I, I don't want anybody to think I'm a fanatic. Right. I mean, I don't want to push anybody away. Right. So you know what? I'm just going to wait for them to come asking me about the gospel. Mm. How often does that happen? They're dead in their sins. We have to go to them with the gospel. So here Joseph was excited. And I ask you, are you excited about serving God? Do you dream? Oh God, give me a ministry. Oh God, may I see people get saved. Right. Or you're saying, man, our preacher needs to, he needs to get on it. I'm just not sure he's really got the fire he used to. Right. We need to look in the mirror of the word of God and say, oh God, don't work with anybody else at our church before you work with me. Hey, husband, do you have a long list of things your wife needs to fix in her life? How's your walk with the Lord? Right. Right. Hey, dad, right. you're not sure where your kids are going? You're not sure about your teenager's heart? Where's your heart? Right. Good. It starts with the youngest young man. He just, I'm just excited about what God's going to do. But here's the thing. Let's transition. Yes, there's a time that we're excited about serving God. But man, the hardships can come, can't they? Man, I'm excited about what God's going to do. And then it's like, well, we get out to the car and then it's like life hits us in the face. So go back to my life. My dad was serving the God and God ended up calling my wife and I back into missions. So I, I went to Bible college, graduated from there. My wife and I were married between our, our, our second and third year of Bible college. God brought us together and we ended up went, went to the mission field. We served in Indonesia for five years, and we were so excited about what God was going to do in our life, and then it seemed like the problems came in. Have you ever thought that serving God, all the problems just run away, fade away? 
I kind of had that mindset. I thought, check engine light on the car is never going to come on because I love Jesus. Uh, we, we, we don't need a, a health insurance car. We're never going to get sick because we love Jesus. I was mistaken. I'm not sure what Joseph thought, but I know he had these exciting moments. And then what happens? The problems started coming one after another after another. Church, I hope you're excited about serving Jesus. But I don't stand up and tell you, serve Jesus, and everything's going to just get easy. My wife and I, we went through some stuff and ended up, we had to come off the mission field, stop being missionaries. If you had asked me then, I would have said, it was health. Looking back, though, I just see the devil attacking. About the same time that we went to the mission field, in a two-year span, four missionary families went to Indonesia. Different groups, different mission boards, but all fundamental missionaries. All four came off the mission field. My family was one of them. We all would have mentioned health as part of the reason. But you know what? I think there's someone behind the, 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 the plans there that's working, that's attacking, and the devil wants to discourage us and get us out of the ministry. So we came back discouraged, but God was working through it all. God does not waste time. Amen. Do you think God was wasting time as Joseph served as a slave? Then he ended up... As he was serving, doing what was right, they still stabbed him in the back, and he became a prisoner. But he just kept showing up for work. You know what we need to do? Just show up for work. Show up for church. Just stay where we are supposed to be. And God started working in my family. I didn't even know what God was doing, but God was working in my family, working in my wife's heart and in my heart. I served at our church, and our pastor was very gracious. He said, listen, you can serve God anywhere. I served as a deacon and a Sunday school teacher. I just kept showing up for church. And God worked in my life and in my family. There are times when we're excited, but then there are times where we think, I think God got it wrong when he picked me. But here's the thing. God doesn't pick you because of you. Some people say something, I kind of disagree with them. They say, I just have no clue why God would ever save me. But the Bible tells us God is love. He picks us because of Him. He loves the world. He is love. It's not because of us. God didn't pick me. He didn't pick you because of us. He says, man, there's a vessel. I want to use them. I want the world to know of my power, my love, my salvation. We are simply servants of God. And Joseph was nothing. He was a nobody. He went from this excitement moment to this like, okay, this isn't happening. I'm not sure what the dream was, but it's not coming to pass. But God took care of our family through it all. I remember one day I was work at work as a financial advisor. I, I got there early and I was doing my devotions there at my desk. And for some reason, I had an invite that popped up on my calendar out of nowhere. I was like, I didn't know we had any meetings today. I clicked on it. It was from my boss's boss's boss. I said, I don't want to meet with my boss's boss's boss. What's going on? So long story short, that day... The team that I was on, they, they did away with that team. We lost our jobs that day. I said, Lord, what's going on? What? So I texted my wife. I said, let's just pray. Let's not tell anybody. Let's just pray. And within uh, probably 40 minutes, I had another job offer with a 40% raise. Wow. That exact same place. See, we, we get all the details, and we start focusing on the details and not on God. Mm. And I said, all right, Lord, what are you doing? You know, God's leading us back to go to going back to Indonesia. And my wife and I, we were talking about it, talking about it. So maybe one day, and I'm sure you guys don't do this, but I was kind of bargaining with the Lord. I said, all right, Lord, I can give more to missions. That's what I'll do. You know, I, I was excited about what you were going to do in the past, but, you know, I tell you what, instead of me going back into missions, I've got a comfortable job. I've got, you know, I love the Lord. I'm in a good church. I'm serving. I'm working in the church. I think I'm doing as much as I really need to do. So the next step, I think, logically, is for me to give more money to missions. But God said, I don't, I don't want your money. God wants your heart, church. Does he have your heart? So finally, my wife and I, we got together and we talked. God was doing a work in my heart, but he was also doing it in my wife's heart about taking us back. A missionary came by and uh, preached that night. And uh, he said, this is on a Sunday, he said, maybe you've stepped out of the boat before and you've sank. He said, maybe you need to get out of the boat again. How about you? Have you had those times you're excited about serving the Lord? 
but then something happens. Maybe your own mistakes, maybe someone else. Maybe you're hurt, maybe you're discouraged, maybe you're just tired. And you're just like, you know what? I, I think that hurt enough the last time I did it. I think I'm, I'm done. But maybe you need to get out of the boat again. Joseph just kept serving. And everywhere he went, he just kept pointing people to God. Turn with me to Genesis 50, please. God does not waste time. Are we going to trust Him and obey? Or are we going to say, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, check out now, Lord. I'll see you when I get to heaven. I'm glad I'm on my way to heaven. I'm not saved by works, but here's the thing. God saved us by grace, but He has saved us unto good works. God has a plan for you. Genesis 50, verse 20. Here's Joseph talking to his brothers as he looks back over his life. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Do you think God was surprised when we ended up coming off the mission field? No. Do you think the devil was happy when we came off the mission field? Oh, yes, he was. Where are you at tonight? Are you closer than you've ever been to God? Are you more excited than ever? Or maybe you're just like, to be honest, Brother Josh, the dream has died. I'm just, I'm just showing up for church right now, trying to keep it together. God has a plan for us. God's not wasting time, and he wants to use us to reach other people. But we're not talking about meat and potatoes. We're talking about the spiritual eternity of men and women, boys and girls. God wants to use us. So my wife and I, we finally said, all right, Lord, we've got it figured out. We're going to wait for our kids to grow up, get out of the house, you know, because moving back to Indonesia is going to be tough on the teenagers. So we've got it figured out, Lord. When they get out of the house, then we're going to go. We've got it figured out. And the Lord wouldn't let us do it. So finally, we said, all right, Lord, we just, we're just going to give you our all. And we're going to stop trying to figure out the details. Because I'm not sure about you guys. Sometimes I want to know all the details before I, 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 all right, let's do it. You know, If we're going on vacation, let's plan every 30 seconds in increments. You know, But sometimes God says, I just need you to step out by faith and trust me. Right. We did that. That was on a Wednesday. This was, it was about two years ago. My wife and I, uh, we were going to talk to the kids. They came back from camp that Friday, and they said, Mom, Dad, guess what? While we were at camp this week, we have surrendered to go anywhere in the world God would have us to go. Amen. They had no clue that we were talking about this. So we got to tell them that, well, good, because we're headed back to Indonesia. <laughs> there are some hard times in our lives, and I... I would love to tell you I always had it all together and I, and I knew the next step and I was always confident. But here's the thing. I just have to keep falling on Him. Maybe you guys have it all figured out. Or maybe you get excited about serving the Lord and you step out and, and it's like a truck comes by and hits you and God wants you to get back up. God has a plan for you, church. That's right. Are you still excited? Amen. Or is the devil stolen the dream that you want to serve God with your life. I'm not talking about the preacher. I'm not talking about someone else at your church. I'm talking about you. What does God want to do in your life? God's taking us back to Indonesia. It's all by His grace. And we are so excited to get to go back. Some people feel sorry for us. Don't feel sorry for us. We love what we get to do. But I hope you're excited about what you're doing for the Lord right here in this community and in this church, so let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us so much. Every day I'm amazed by your grace. But this world is so confused. They're blinded. I pray that we would take the gospel to the world boldly, yet with love, and share your story of forgiveness, of redemption, so they can be washed like we are. Lord, please work in this church tonight. If someone's lost, I pray they'd be saved. Those that are saved, I pray that they would be on fire for you, Lord. And if they're not, maybe they're discouraged, maybe distracted. I pray they would just recommit to you, Lord, to run back to you and see what you have for them. From this day forward, in Christ's name we pray.